Enterprise resilience is actually closely aligned to continuity of operations or business continuity planning. It's often defined using the BSI, the British Standards Institution, and the ISO definitions. Resilience is an organization's ability to anticipate and react to change, not only to survive, but to evolve with rapid changes in technology, applications, and services, as well as emerging threats to security. Remember, resilience doesn't necessarily begin and end with a crisis-proof service or a crisis-proof supply chain. Rather, the key word is change. Resilience is necessary in response to all kinds of change, not just a crisis or a catastrophe. To be resilient, it's true, you have to be able to manage through a hurricane's disruption of a supplier's factory, for example. Uh, just recently, as a resident of Texas, we had to deal with a financially catastrophic and disruptive Hurricane Harvey. Beyond that, though, an organization has to manage through sudden shifts in consumer purchasing behavior. By anticipating those shifts and reorienting or you know, readjusting the ship of the organization to continue you know, providing what customers want. There's mega trends like IoT and IOE, and these are engulfing the global economy. Okay? We've got demographic changes, rapid urbanization, shifts in economic power, political change climate change, technological breakthrough, all these factors will drive kind of an economic ecosystem and dynamism that your organization, your enterprise must be resilient to, okay? If your business is unable to handle the uncharted, you know, waters of change, for example, at Brio, if we're unprepared for that, okay, we fail to navigate and we're going to lose opportunities. We're going to lose market penetration and we're going to lose market share. What we see here is from the University of Sunshine Coast in Australia is where these diagrams come from. They've got some pretty elaborate demonstrations of their enterprise, their university's resiliency. So for them, it begins with planning, okay? Planning their policy and their procedures. Then normal operations, you know, continuity, what they call business as usual. Well, obviously there'll be a disruption to that and that'll be a incident, not an event, but a negative event, which is an incident. That's gonna activate emergency response. That's gonna activate incident management, the IRTs. Then based on the scope and the magnitude of the incident, it may mean programs in place, processes for business survival or business continuity or what we call continuity of operations. That's activating the IT disaster recovery plan and their business continuity plans. And again, with the success of those plans, they will recover their business to normal operations. This diagram is a little bit more elaborate because it breaks down for this university kind of the different departments, the different committees that are involved at different levels and who has accountability. So just for an example, at the top, they have an audit and risk management committee. So for this organization, that committee has the fiduciary accountability. And that's a very important aspect of resilience. You know, this university is in a really good job of in continuity and resilience and continual improvement is identifying who's accountable. Okay, who is accountable for strategy? Who's accountable for the fiduciary duties? Okay, who's responsible for functional and program management? Okay, here it's their senior staff. So, and along all of these implementations and accountability, there's continuous monitoring and reporting over there on the right hand side. And the continual monitoring and reporting is what leads to continual improvement. So, let's look at kind of a ITIL. Uh, and, and kind of integrated look at continual improvement here next. This is an excellent diagram because it combines some of the elements of ITIL's continuous improvement with some other methodologies. For example, the PDCA, Plan, Do, Check, Act. So let's start with plan. And when I say plan, I want to start with the kind of the top and the upper right hand quadrant. Okay, which begins with data. So we begin with two things. One, we begin with data, raw data, 
and previously established wisdom. And I'll make that clear here in a second. So we have previously established wisdom, which is based on our history, our past, okay? What we've done, our lessons learned, and all of the things that are in our knowledge base. So based on what we already know and have accomplished, that's our wisdom, we have now new data, new input. So we're gonna identify the strategy for improvement, right? So our vision, our new business needs, if this is you know BYOD, for example, what's our strategy, our tactical goals? Okay, remember, strategy is more of a organizational approach, tactical is more of an operational approach, and then our operational goals. That's the first step, and then again, we have our existing wisdom that's going to feed into that, but then we're gonna go to step two in the ITIL life cycle, which is defining what we're gonna measure. And so now we've got new data, okay? So we're gathering new data, gathering who, how, when, okay? uh, What criteria are we gonna evaluate? Uh, What is the integrity of that data? How useful is it? Do we have meaningful metrics? How do we measure our different services. So that is data, and that's raw data, structured or unstructured. So we're now in the plan and the do part of PDCA. Next, in step four, we have process the data. So now we're doing and we're checking, we're evaluating. Notice that now data is starting to move into what we call information. So we're really deriving usable results from that structured or unstructured data, whether it's in a SQL database or it's Hive over Hadoop, we're now taking that raw data and using analytics and using processes to turn that into information, processing the data, okay? So what's the frequency of the event or the incident? What's the, you know, how are we gonna format this for visibility? What tools and systems? We can measure accuracy. So now that we're doing and we're checking, we're seeing that information now is gonna go to the next level, and that's information becoming knowledge. So in the knowledge quadrant at the lower left, we've now got step five and step six. We're analyzing the information with a variety of manual and automated tools, uh, learning you know, on the high end, artificial intelligence and behavioral analytics, okay? Uh, Maybe our own proprietary algorithms for machine learning, right? Using data science tools like R programming, Okay, to find trends, to see targets, to, to do gap analysis, to find areas of improvement. Okay, analyzing the data information, now it's becoming knowledge. Once we have this knowledge, we want to make sure that we report it and share it with stakeholders, with the C team, the C suite, with our vendors, with our customers. So we're going to present this usable information, it's now knowledge. So we're gonna have visibility tools, we're gonna have dashboards, we're gonna have presentations, action plans, assessment summaries. So now we're acting, we're getting ready to act on this data. Once we properly act and we implement our improvement mechanisms, the the circle is complete. We've planned, we've done, we've checked, now we're acting and the acting that we're doing is mature and it's wisdom based on following a continual improvement life cycle.